So your Shakespeare measure for measure exam is in less than two weeks. You want to have a final look at an outstanding 15 out of 15 extract response for question A. You're in the right place. Let's fine tune your technique and introduce some subtle changes to your essay writing that will propel you towards an A star. Stay tuned and watch Schofield on Shakespeare. Brief reminder of the mark scheme. AO1 determines your bands and rewards quality of argument, writing and understanding of text and task. However, even more importantly, at least in terms of the percentages, AO2 is about your insight into language, form and structure, your use of quotations and your understanding of how Shakespeare creates dramatic effects in relation to the audience. Practice really does make perfect with Schofield on Shakespeare. In a moment, we're going to do a full question, and let's zoom forward to Act 5, Scene 1. Remember to include a short introduction which summarises the key events within the extract and puts it in the context of the wider play. What has just happened prior to this extract? Are the key ideas and themes within the extract important within the play as a whole? You then need to start main body paragraphs with topic sentences which provide insight into a key moment within the extract before quoting, probing, quoting again, giving insight and developing initial ideas in further detail. Remember also to consider how the audience both modern and contemporary, are likely to respond to these moments. In terms of dramatic effects, you need to recognise that the extract you are reading is performed on stage. The examiner is asking you to explore the effects on the audience of devices such as dialogue, stage directions, monologues, soliloquies, asides, and most pertinently, with measure for measure, dramatic irony. A few points to stress. You can see now a paragraph taken from an official OCR exemplar response from June 2019, which achieved 15 out of 15. Notice the regular use of subject terminology, punctuation, repetition, adjective. Note also the amount of detail the candidate goes into when exploring quotations with the phrases most good, most good and as all comforts and good requoted in order to give additional specific insights. So that gives you a bit of an idea, but of course your response is going to be even better. The extract is about to appear at five second intervals. I'd recommend locating it within your text and drawing a box around the correct section. So press pause now and write around two and a half sides of delicious insight into this fascinating moment for the final scene of Measure for Measure. Here's my A-star model response. In this extract, Mariana responds to the Duke's questioning with equivocation and apparent riddles before revealing that she believes Angelo is her husband's. This is a fascinating moment on many levels. The audience will be keen to watch Angelo's facial expression and body language, knowing that he believes he abused his position of power by sleeping with Isabella rather than his former fiancée. The audience will also be interested in the fact that the all-knowing Duke is choosing to delay his revelations about Angelo's hypocrisy, even though he previously expressed feelings of abhorrence, twice treble shame on Angelo. In relation to the text as a whole, 
we encounter yet another example of characters hell-bent on deceiving each other, with even Mariana being coerced into playing along with the Duke's endless manipulative machinations. At the beginning of the extract, when the Duke asks whether Angelo does not smile at this, he is referring to Isabella's unlikely sounding allegation that he insisted on the gift of her chaste body in exchange for Claudio's life. The Duke's question is clearly intended to offer false reassurance to Angelo and implies that he thinks these allegations are so ridiculous that they have to be smiled or laughed at. That said, the audience know through dramatic irony that the Duke is simply playing with Angelo and biding his time before exposing his corruption. Meanwhile, his subsequent statement is far more ambiguous. Oh heaven, the vanity of wretched fools. Angelo is likely to feel or hope that this statement is a general expression of despair at the arrogance of inferior beings who have the gall to make scandalous accusations. However, the audience is likely to feel that this is probably aimed at the snow broth Angelo himself, with the Duke wondering at his deputy's transformation, which confirms that power can indeed change purpose. The returning Duke's power within, within Vienna is such that he can set up a ridiculous scenario in which Angelo is judge of his own cause. For the modern audience in particular, this presents a blatantly unfair conflict of interest. How can Angelo be a fair judge when he is the person accused of the crime? But on stage, this fact is quickly passed over as it allows the Duke and the audience additional time to observe Angelo, knowing that at any point the Duke can choose to expose him. However, the majority of the extract focuses on the exchange between the Duke and Mariana, which is given a comic element due to Lucio's irrepressible, irreverent interjections. My lord, she may be a punk, with punk referring to a prostitute. Mariana mysteriously refers to her husband in her first speech, and yet replies in the negative to the Duke's question about whether she is married. On one level, what we're seeing here is Mariana choosing to interpret her secret sexual liaison with Angelo as marking official consummation of their previous engagement. However, the repeated calm negative constructions, no my lord and neither my lord, also show Mariana presenting herself as a demure, passive, respectful partner who wants to behave appropriately in the presence of her husband. Modern audiences may well feel that her passivity is overblown and jarring, both previously in Act 4, Scene 1, and here in this scene, as she implicitly consents to the Duke's simplistic, repressive categorization of the roles played by the women. They must be made widow or wife or nothing. However, her use of polyptotan in the riddling sounding confession that she has known her husband, but that her husband knows not that ever he knew me, shows remarkable dignity, particularly given the grubbiness of the bed swap sexual liaison. The verb know means both that she has known her husband in a sexual sense, but also that he doesn't realise that she was his sexual partner. Mariana's dignity is maintained when she responds to Angelo's imperative, let's see thy face, with a beautiful speech with echoes of religious imagery. She uses anaphora, to reference her face, hand and body in order to highlight Angelo's past treachery and the fact that he had previously agreed to marry her, thus justifying her decision to use her body to trick him into consummating their relationship. The phrase, this is the body, has echoes of the New Testament in which Jesus declared, this is my body which is given for you. Thus Mariana's language highlights the spiritual, self-sacrificial nature of her love and decision to take part in the potentially sordid bed swap plot. At this point in the play, the audience are likely to be moved by Mariana's extraordinary steadfast devotion, which has remained resolute. Phrases such as, all the effects of love confirm the depth of her feelings. That said, the audience are also likely to be puzzled by Mariana's continuing devotion, given the fact that Angelo so ruthlessly discarded her previously and was so bewitched by the treasure of Isabella's body. Lucio's interjections not only ease some of the tension on stage, as we wonder when the Duke would choose to expose Angelo, and how the latter will respond to being tricked by his former fiancée. 
They also make the audience wonder how the Duke will ultimately deal with him, given that he previously implied, implied to Friar Lodewick that the absent Duke used to pay for sexual liaisons with old, impoverished women. His use was to put a ducat in her clack dish. In this scene, the Duke's growing irritation is seen in lines such as, For the benefit of silence, would thou wert so too? This exclamation shows the Duke calling out in exasperation for Lucio to be drunk, as at least it means he wouldn't be able to carry on interjecting so obnoxiously. Now, think back to the mark scheme. How does this response meet the criteria within the top bands? I'll put the response back on screen shortly with my answers at five second segments so that you can ponder this question. Press pause to get cracking. So, what did you pick out? What aspects of the way the response was written and structured interested you? Let me talk you through my ideas. Note that in my introduction, I sum up the extract succinctly within the very first sentence. Note also that I have a wide vocabulary, and I want to use this to produce an engaging, lively, perceptive response. This is English literature A-level after all. Show off! use more complex words, provided they work within the context. The question asks you to explore dramatic effects, and so I aim to do this within the introduction with a reference to what the audience is likely to be particularly interested in, with Angelo, the most obvious person to watch like a hawk. You need to show the examiner that you have an outstanding understanding of the play as a whole. When you're presented with an extract, what has happened previously is clearly relevant and important. Within this section, it helps explain what the Duke is referring to when he asks Angelo whether he does not smile at this. Contextualise your quotations. Don't just plonk. Also make sure that you seamlessly embed the quotations so they flow naturally within your own sentences. Occasionally, you may need to change a word and signify this within square brackets, as I do here when I change my to her chaste body. You want to convince the examiner that you have a wonderfully detailed understanding of the passage. So occasionally it can be helpful to use a satellite quotation in passing, as I do here when I quickly give an example of Lucio's irrepressible, irreverent interjections. I don't get AO2 marks for this, but it is helpful in terms of AO1. Notice the connective use here on one level. However, however, aim to develop your analysis and recognise that there can be multiple layers to the action unfolding on stage. Note the use of subject terminology here. Negative constructions, polyptotum, verb, when asked to explore Shakespeare's use of language, remember to cover the basics. Be explicit about meaning and effect. However, look for opportunities to explore connotations, as I do here when I reference the echoes of Jesus' language around the communion ritual within Mariana's remarkably noble speech. I often get asked whether it's okay to reference other parts of the play. Well, I think this is a good idea, provided it helps you explain an aspect of the scene in more detail. For instance, why is the Duke so irritated and snappy with dear Lucio in this scene? Well, to some huge extent, it's because of what he said to him when he was disguised as Friar Lodewick. Yes, you've been watching Schofield and Shakespeare. Best of luck for that exam in uh, less than two weeks' time. Many thanks for watching.